Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending as to where is everybody uh, located. Again, my name is Nasser Al-Batal. Uh, I'll be introducing Agile Scrum uh, over the next uh, probably 45 minutes or so. Just quickly about my background, 28 plus years in IT. And uh, uh, to, uh, to summarize it and not to bore you with all the details, um, my subject matter expertise in, uh, in a set of diverse uh, best practices, uh, Agile, uh, Scrum, DevOps, TOGAF, ITIL, COBIT, ISO 20000, um, to mention a few. Uh, I've been doing this uh, globally, and uh, I'm delighted to uh, introduce uh, Agile Scrum uh, to you over this hour. Um, so there is quite a bit of information, but I'll try to summarize as much as possible. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, either Paul or the Pika will monitor the questions and will let me know because I want to maximize my screen uh, so that uh, uh, GoToMeeting doesn't uh, eat away from some of the content. So as we all know, uh, uh, as you are introducing different projects and different business requirements. Um, you may find yourself in a position where you're going to need more than just one subject matter. So the, uh, first and utmost before we get into Agile is the decision whether Agile or not to Agile. Um, the same decision you know, apply to all these other best practices. This is an example just for you to see and to consider every organization is going to need some sort of combination of best practices for it to function properly and with that in mind you need to have the appropriate uh, business capability architecture in the background that details and structures what best practices you need to establish and have in mind another another uh, very important aspect is that you need to make it your own whatever combination uh, uh, you're going to notice very quickly that there will be duplication and processes across, you know, these best practices. So you want to filter them and you want to make, in quote, your own best practice and or framework to work with. And this example here, again, to show you quickly how some of these best practices kind of uh, uh, talk to each other or overlap in some cases. And you notice Agile Scrum and agile service management right are in couple of couple of spots supporting devops in this case but at the same time you see i told below and you see architecture on the left hand side and of course the cultural aspect at the very bottom of the screen where you need to ensure that there is appropriate collaboration and positive uh, uh, culture in 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 respect of uh, the best practice that you are introducing now, first things first, from uh, an agile point of view, uh, I'm not sure if, if you have been exposed at all to agile, but one uh, very important thing is, is, is agile is bringing with it a new uh, 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 perspective on things. Historically speaking, organizations introduced processes, contracts, uh, change, you know, change controls and change management. And very quickly, you started to notice, you know, uh, uh, some bottlenecks uh, uh, around these processes and around these uh, controls, uh, even to the point where it actually uh, uh, kind of stumbled the organization, if it's the proper term, from appropriate delivery. So Agile came in with the idea that, wait a minute, you know, the, the purpose is not, you know, for the process to... Uh, 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 to, to cause adverse impact. The, the, the purpose is that the process, you know, need to be just enough to enable us to do what we need to do. So we, we value having the process and the tools in place. However, we value more that we have interactions, you know, uh, uh, within the organization and get things moving, get things to work. The same thing when we talk about documentation. We need to have documentation, we value having documentation, but not to the point where we're drowning in it. So we value more having working software 
than you know documentation out of our yin yangs as we say the same discussion on contract negotiation and and on the plan so some organization you know transform the contract to be what i call a penalty stick that's not really the purpose the purpose is that we have enough and proper collaboration with the customer so that we both benefit and get the job done the same thing applies to uh, the plan so the purpose is to respond to the change and get the job done not to get stuck with the plan so this uh, manifesto as we call it it's it's a cornerstone in the agile understanding because it's going to set the stage you know as to how you're going to work later on so as you can see very quickly it's not as uh, how should I say this? It's not as rigid as the uh, 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 the traditional type of standards and frameworks that we have seen in the industry, although they're needed, but not to the point of uh, 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 slowing down the business. Uh, so the term agile comes with the agility, the, the business being dynamic, uh, responsive, uh, customer you know oriented. Uh, not just to be concerned about following steps and signing contracts and, and so on. So they're, 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 to say at, at the least, there shall be a balance you know, in uh, uh, this approach. Uh, AgileManifesto.org is a website where you, you can go in and see the same as you have on the screen. So Agile is a little bit different from the approach associated with the waterfall. With the waterfall, you know, we were pretty much uh, waiting until the entire project is done so that we get the benefit at the end of the day. And we were resistant to any sort of uh, introduction of change along the way because that's going to deviate from what we're doing and it's going to, you know, cost more and so on. And we already know where we're going, so why should we change and so on? So this is kind of a strict. Uh, uh, let's call it method, whereby you, you you don't have the agility that I'm talking about. So Agile, you know, came with the idea, you know what, we can still follow these steps, but instead of waiting all the way until of the end of the project, we can build the project based on increments. So we're going to decide, especially that we may not know what the end result is going to look like, and we may not know what kind of changes may be introduced at any given point in time. So it gives us the ability now to, instead of looking at this end to end as one type of activity, we're gonna look at it you know, from a vertical point of view where we apply all of these activities for this increment and then apply them again for this increment and so on and so forth for this increment. Instead of waiting for all of this to get done for the entire project. So what happens here is that we are introducing ongoing, right, business value, right? So this business value could be in the form of what we call shippable product or in the form of working software or in the form of whatever you want it to be. Uh, 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 organizations are not following Agile only for software development, by the way. Uh, organizations are following Agile for all type of business competencies. Before I get to these uh, uh, things, uh, I worked with a, a large number of organizations over the years. Some of them are uh, aircraft manufacturers, and they follow Agile on the assembly line on the manufacturing floor. So there is no application development there and they're not packaging something and sending it out the door. But the fact of the matter is that as you know, the, the life cycle of the product happens, you have different, uh, let's call them workstations, right? And each workstation is responsible for something. So this one may be responsible uh, for the wings. This one is responsible for the fuselage. This one responsible for the landing gear and so on and so forth. And they do follow Agile and they do have, you know, the, the, their Scrum approach along the way. The mindset here is that we are focused on people, on customers. 
we want to make sure that we have working software, uh, even at times with high frequency releases. Uh, we want to be flexible, very important, customer oriented and customer involved. And of course, there are other characteristics. Trust is one of them. Iteration is another. Incremental delivery. So as I said earlier, if the life cycle includes, I don't know, let's say five main components, right? Instead of waiting the entire project to get that delivery, I can have what we call an increment delivery along the way. One way to make this structured and to make it efficient and to make it effective is to time box it. In other words, I would come in and say, as an example, this iteration is going to take X amount of minutes or X amount of hours. You know, this iteration is going to take, you know, Y amount of hours and so on and so forth, depending on what I'm doing. This will provide you the control. Agile also is associated with a number of other frameworks. So things like extreme programming, uh, as, as example, uh, dynamic uh, uh, system development methods, as example, Scrum is, is the most known in the industry uh, today, as example. So all of these are different agile uh, methods, right, to support the overall uh, approach. We talk about it as light, you know, a framework, but don't, don't be fooled because although it's simple in terms of the concept, it is a little bit difficult if it's not done properly, then, you know, it's not going to provide you the results that you, you would be hoping for. So this is a framework, it's not a process. And of course, you want to make sure that at the end of the day, you have, you know, the ability uh, to deliver what we call shippable products at the end of your sprint. So some roles and responsibilities associated with the Scrum approach, which enables Agile. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this, may, others may not. Um, in terms of roles, you have the owner, the product owner, and this is kind of a business-oriented individual will communicate with the business and or the customer as well will communicate with the scrum master the scrum master is more of if you want to call the coach right or the as we call it slave lead leader to the development team the development team basically a group of you know subject matter uh, uh, um, expertise you know to do a specific uh, job and these people have diverse set of skills. They're not, of course, all of one skill in order to get the job done. As part of the activities, you know, we're gonna be doing sprints. We're gonna, of course, plan for these sprints. And, you know, as part of the approach, we're gonna do what we call your daily scrum. Uh, you're gonna execute, you're gonna review, and you're gonna check for improvement and retrospective. And at the end of the day, you're going to uh, 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 groom your product backlog. We're going to see what all of this means in a second. Artifacts is, are associated with product backlog, sprint backlog, and eventually what we call shippable product increment. There is an emphasis on the term, as I said, the, the, the term in, increment here, because it's the accumulation of the different increments that is going to deliver your project or your product or your or your software at the end of the day and of course you have certain rules that you have to follow along the way so this is uh, uh, the same in terms of uh, the roles and the responsibilities so as you notice the product owner here has the relationship with the stakeholders and or the customers, but also has the relationship with the Scrum Master and the development team. This whole combination is what we call the Scrum team. All right. So there is definition, there is definition and there is a, a, a differentiation 
between development team and the scrum team. And we're going to talk about this a little bit later. If not, then, you know, we'll talk about it when hopefully we'll see you in the training session. The scrum team is, you know, the combination of the owner, the master, the development team, and even, you know, if you have any invitees, right? It's self-organizing, it's cross-functional. Again, the authority is within, so nobody can come in and tell the team to restructure a certain uh, uh, priority that they have already established, right? This is part of what they do. And once you have your story, as we call, straight, then you don't come back to change it unless if there is a business you know, uh, uh, issue of some sort with that. And then there are the exceptions to, uh, to talk about. So in terms of the product owner, the product owner's job really is to manage the product backlog. That's their main scope, main focus. And as I said, potentially communicate with customer or business, yeah, on one hand. On the other hand, communicate with the rest of the team. When we talk about the product log, these are all different requirements, yeah? But there are requirements in the form of what we call user stories that eventually gonna be prioritized in that product backlog. And from there on, we're gonna decide on which ones we're gonna start with and which one we're gonna uh, uh, basically uh, plan and eventually work with. So a high level view, when we establish you know, these user story and then we plan the sprint, right? Then we break down what the backlog, the sprint backlog that is gonna look like. So what the user story is and how it's broken down to a number of different tasks how these tasks are gonna be done you know, by the team. And every day we're gonna have what we call the daily scrum or, or the stand-up meeting as, as it's called as well, all the way until we have at the end of the day what we call shippable product. So let's clear this up for a second. At this point here, when we say shippable product or working software, right? or uh, increment this delivers a business value of some sort all right after everything is said and done we're gonna review of course review on you know whether the, the the product was meaningful and review whether the approach needs improvement so the term review and retrospective mean two different things Along the way, there are, of course, down here, certain uh, uh, steps and certain time boxes associated with these steps from initially the discussion of what's the portfolio gonna look like until we get approval. And then we estimate the time needed all the way to establishing what we call, you know, the, 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 the the product backlog item and eventually the release plan right and from there on we're going to talk to the scrum master where the scrum master is going to be as i call them the servant leader or the coach that will facilitate the work for the team will remove any obstacle associated with the team and what i'm talking about here is your development team right so if there are any obstacles and so on, then the Scrum Master will, will work on that, okay? And of course, the Scrum Master will lead those daily meetings, as we call them, stand-up meetings, you know, on a regular basis. Why do we do the stand-up meetings? Because we want to figure out, you know, uh, uh, what uh, we have or what has been done uh, uh, since uh, yesterday, what are we going to do today? And if there are any obstacles, right, along the way, and if there is, then the uh, Scrum Master's job is to remove these obstacles. This meeting is limited to no more than 15 minutes, right? 
per stand-up meeting. The development team, this is the team that is actually doing the work. Uh, again, these are developers and it should not exceed nine people in total. So it's, as we say, three people at minimum, nine people at maximum. These are people with diverse skills and knowledge that will be performing the work itself right in this circle over here. And of course, they will be part of your stand-up meeting on daily basis to figure out again what we've done yesterday, what we're gonna do today, if there are any obstacles that we foresee and the, 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 the Scrum Master will look at it. So this sprint, right, is what we call the heart of Scrum. From an agile point of view, the agility is enabling you, of course, to have different iterations where each iteration is its own sprint and each sprint has an associated, you know, uh, 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 time box, right, up to a calendar month. So in other words, minimum two weeks, maximum four weeks worth of work. There are rules, I mean, we don't really have time to go through all the details, but there are rules. What happens if, you know, if we're gonna have to, uh, uh, can we exceed the four weeks or not? And, you know, if we have to, what do we do? And so on and so forth. There is much more detail to talk about in this uh, short time. What you need to do, you need to plan your sprint. So as you see, the product backlog is telling us, right? What is it that needs to be done, okay? We're going to uh, filter it. We're going to prioritize it. We're going to make sure that we, we order it in, in, in a certain sequence. And then from there on, as you see, we go to the planning and from the planning to the action where the development eventually is going to get done. All this, right, is from a, a sprint planning perspective. The daily stand-up meeting, as I mentioned, you know, this is a must. And it's suggested that you do it at the same time, at the same place every day. It's suggested that you do it, you know, within the same geography, right? But in this day and age, as you very well know, in some uh, 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 projects, people are dispersed all over the place. So you're gonna use collaborating tools to run your uh, stand-up meeting, as we call it daily stand-up or daily scrum meeting as well. Okay, so you need to figure, you know, uh, uh, how to gonna be straight to the point because of your time limitation. This is not about debating. This is not about arguing. This is about what did we do yesterday? What are we gonna do today? Do we have any obstacles, right? Or do we have anything that we need to be concerned about? And, you know, you involve your scrum master, of course, to uh, uh, help along the way. Now, there is the review after your, your, your sprint is done, there is the review that will reflect on, did we deliver as required, okay? So this is, as we say, uh, informal, very limited in time, four hours maximum. We'll try to get feedback. We try to collaborate, right? And we make sure that, again, at the end of the day, this information is gonna help us to groom the product backlog. Along the way, as you can see, who's involved. So you have external stakeholders, internal stakeholders, your scrum team, which is you know, the, the product owner, the scrum master and the development team. And potentially you may even invite other, right? D depending on the need, okay? So the question of course is that, we have a shippable product. Did it meet or did it align with what the uh, uh, user story uh, uh, is all about, right? Um, the retrospective is now a different uh, view. The retrospective, first of all, is limited to three hours. It's reflective on 
did we do the sprint appropriately? It's not about the quality of the deliverable, right? It's about, did we follow the sprint appropriate? Did we perform appropriately, right? And if yes, we do the happy dance. If not, then we need to improve. But also very, very important is to review, you know, what we call definition of done, all right? DOD, not Department of Defense. This is definition of done. So in other words, when you come to the point where you say, here's my, you know, shippable product. What declares it as, as completed? What declares it as completed is this settings here, right? So if the shippable product matches what you establish or what you define as the definition of done, then we do the happy dance. If not, it's not, you know, it's not shippable and it's not workable. And that means that it has to go back into the product backlog, all right? So it's critical to establish, it's like saying, you know, your, your, your acceptance criteria, you're not gonna accept the product if it doesn't meet the acceptance criteria. But here we don't call them acceptance criteria. We're saying that this working software, it's only in quote working if it achieves one, two, three, four. And you define what these one, two, three, four means. We call it definition of done. In the initial settings, when we talk about product backlog, right, you need to set up a story. So the way you set up a story is you have to, you have to establish, first of all, who you are, what you want to do, and why you want to do it, right? Again, so who you are, what to do, and why to do it. And you're gonna assign it, right? What we call a number of story point. This number of story point is what we call estimate, effort, estimating effort to do the work, yeah? And this is very important to figure out, you know, eventually how long, you know, the, 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 the job is gonna take. Because the job, you know, remember, so this is an increment. This is another increment. This is another increment and so on and so forth, right? So you need to figure out a total at the end of the day, you know, what would be the amount of effort, right? So you establish what we call a, 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 a spring backlog list, right? And you identify, you know, what needs to be done. So this is the backlog item, the task, did you start it? And, you know, is it done? Of course, in between, if you want to detail it, so you can say work in progress, but you can be a little bit more specific. You know, I'm doing something here, I'm doing something here, I'm doing something here. And after everything is said and done, you would say it's done. So in maximum, that story, you know, should not be more than two days worth of effort, okay? Or rather, the, the 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 sorry, the 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 tasks, right? So this is this is on the same uh, discussion. I mean, without getting in in this level of detail, what's important is making sure that you are delivering that business value, right? At the end of the day, this is a quick example to uh, show you what are these uh, uh, time boxes or what time limitations, yeah? So a sprint, as I said, maximum one month. So in other words, two to four weeks. Daily stand-up meeting, 15 minutes. So you have certain time boxes where you have minimum, maximum, and you have other time boxes that are set. So the 15 minutes is set. S uh, sprint planning, right maximum eight hours sprint review maximum four hours retrospective maximum three hours and so on okay so these are time limitations to ensure that you know we are very focused to complete the job within that limitation okay this is what i was saying a little bit earlier on definition of done 
okay? So when the work is complete, is it, you know, more uh, uh, detailed, less detailed, uh, can be selected for sprints or not, right? So this is now from one team to another, it will vary, right? If you take the definition that you established with team one and give it to team two, maybe team two is going to give you some differences, right? And that's fine. That's fine. Th that's not the point. The point is that the team agrees right unless if you are working on a scaled agile uh, 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 perspective then you're going to look at the teams to agree but for a uh, an agile project the team need to agree as to what the definition of done means okay and again you cannot claim a shippable product or a working software until that definition of done has been established. Yes? Um, so of course, uh, you have your sprint planning meeting and, and you're gonna discuss a number of different things. You know, at the end of the day, the job is to make sure that you have uh, figured out the sprint goal and, and the sprint backlog uh, details, right? So that you move on to the next step. Okay, and again, part of that discussion is making sure that we break down, you know, the sprints and the tasks associated with those sprints in terms of what needs uh, to be done. And of course, you know, the release and or releases, yeah, are associated with the different sprints. So you can have a release initially that may be associated with four different sprints. So release 0 0.5, you know, in the traditional uh, uh, term, that's a release package, but a release package is introduced over four sprints. So the release plan includes four, four uh, uh, sprints, and each release should not go, you know, more than nine months. There is an average, and that's fine. It's not necessarily carved in stone, but the limitation is no more than nine month per release right and again as we've seen this is the same story here the release is associated with sprint the sprint is associated with story the story is associated with tasks this is your uh, uh, uh breakdown structure if you wish right the same the same discussion at this point the backlog you know you're gonna pull down from the backlog and you're gonna work on different types of releases where the release could be here they're using the minimum you know two weeks per uh, uh per uh, uh sprint um we talk about you know when you have large projects so these are kind of again not carved in stones but these are also guidelines yeah so small projects usually three to six sprints six to 12 weeks and a single team where the large project is more than six sprints more than six months multiple teams and potentially right may include what we call epic stories epic stories are meant to be large or major right uh, 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 items to uh, deliver so throughout this whole discussion of course you want to make sure that you are planning when you are planning, there are multiple levels of planning. There is planning at the business level, at the strategic level. There is planning at the portfolio and backlog level, right? There is planning at the uh, product, right, uh, level. There is planning at the sprint level and so on and so forth until you get to the daily scrum that we are doing on daily basis so you need to keep that in mind this is uh, another quick view on uh, what we call a user story and and the format of user story so again you need to say you know who are you and as a member you know of something yeah 
you could be a member of uh, uh, an organization or a member of uh, certain, uh, uh, how should I say this, uh, have a subscription with some group or whatever, doesn't really matter. Give me, tell me who you are and what do you want to do, yeah? So you want to code something, you want to design something, you want to automate something. And then we figure out, right, the effort. And this is where we talk about, you know, estimating that discussion that we we're talking about earlier. Okay. Now, why is it that this estimation is important because you want to know what your team capacity is in the traditional term we talk about you know team capacity in the agile world we call it team velocity so the team velocity means that you have completed historically x number of points over certain number of sprints so this example says you completed 136 points over 12 sprints so your velocity is equal to 11. that's your team capacity if i come in and i give you a piece of work that requires velocity of 15 you're going to say wait a minute right we we have to either break it further down or you know it's not going to work because our capacity is limited to this much yeah so that gives you the the, the ability to have a much better estimation in terms of what your team capacity or what your team capability is yeah so you're going to need historical data to figure this out. And this is gonna enable you, of course, to plan and eventually enable you to do the work, all right? A lot of people, a lot of organization end up working blind. Oh, no worries, we've done it before, piece of cake, all the wishy-washy statements. And then guess what? When it comes to the delivery point, now we're delayed or you know we, we had to pull out some people on another project or 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 and this is why when you set up your development team right you have to figure out what this velocity is so that you know what your team capability is i'm not going to get into this but what i want you to know is that you have different types of estimation right there is blind estimation there is affinity estimation there is uh, 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 fabonacci estimation also based on what we call planning poker right uh, uh, so sorry sorry it's fibonacci not fabonacci fibonacci uh, estimation which is your planning poker so basically if i have four or five of you as a team right i'm gonna give you this deck yeah each one of them is a card and of course there is more than that this is just an example i'm gonna give you this deck and i'm gonna tell you what do you estimate the effort to be for as an example coding yeah a certain uh, uh, script so now each one of you gonna divulge the information as they see accurate you know one maybe will give it a three one will give it a two you know another one will give it another three and another two and then one will give it a five right so on average it's going to be around this area and then we need to figure out why the five and we decide that in total this is going to be a 10 to work with right so that means that we're going to work with 10 uh, 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 points on this project, yeah? Just to give you a quick example. This is again, in terms of estimation, when we're talking uh, estimation, estimation is done at two main levels. One level at the product backlog, another level 
at the team yeah and this kind of give you an idea this is more precise because they're the one who do the job and then at the end of the day of course you have when we talk about uh, monitor monitoring and metrics you know i want to know how the team has done or what did we deliver or did not deliver so there are a number of different measurements and metrics that you're gonna uh, generate right things associated as an example with with success with defects with the uh, 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 burn down rates in other words what's left to do the velocity of the team just to mention a few okay this is again burn down chart and it's meant to show you the remaining work in a sprint yeah we don't have the time to really get into all the specifics but you need to generate right uh, 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 something this is by the way it's uh, before we get to the next one this is uh, 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 it's it's uh, what is it called uh, um, radiator information radiator So it could be in this format, you know, some other, you know, uh, 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 document or graph could be, you know, uh, bar, uh, uh, bar graph, pie graph, whatever, right? So on and etc. So these are all known as information radiator. What that means is that you're going to have big printouts of these charts, put them on the walls that are seen by the whole team we know exactly where we are they're updated on daily basis all right it gives you an indication as to what has been done what's left to do if we're doing good or bad if we're happy or sad all of this good stuff and eventually if the project is an epic project a complex project then we use the term scrum of scrums where you have, you know, let's call it Scrum 1, Scrum 2, Scrum 3, and you will have a representative of each of these scrums to form the Scrum of Scrum so that now the decisions, yeah, are done. And even your, your uh, uh, daily Scrum, right, is done at this level, and then you provide feedback to the different uh, uh, teams, right? Again, remember earlier I said up to nine months, and they're saying more than a year should be discouraged. So, I, everything that we talked about here is a is a significant change in project management approach and delivery we're not delivering you know uh, uh, as we say uh, uh, the project end to end in one big bang we are delivering based on increments we have time limitations we have specific activities even though we are dynamic and agile but at the same time you know there are some kind of box timing that that needs to be done so with this change business change project management change, cultural change, you need to go over what we call organizational transformation. And with that in mind, you follow, if anybody of you is familiar, you follow Mr. John Cotter's, yeah, uh, uh, eight steps of organizational change. This is not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take you a little bit of time, but certainly if it's done properly, then the results would be really significant and the business will be uh, much, much happier because they are actually achieving business value more often than not, right? And uh, 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 achieving more success more often than not. Having said that, Agile, although great, but it may not be for every organization. 
and please keep that in mind, okay? Many, many people today are trying to kind of squeeze Agile in anything and everything. So in some concepts, yes, it's dual, doable. I gave you an example of manufacturing. Uh, I, I, you know, even in enterprise architecture, we can use, you know, uh, some of the agile. In application development, absolutely, right? In IT service management, in some cases. But it doesn't necessarily mean that agile is a medication to all diseases. Just keep that in mind. All right. So this is my piece. Do we have any questions? Nasser, I'd like to kick it off. This is Paul um, with a simple well, a question on tools and to whatever extent tools like Jira and Trello or some of the open source, uh, my collab, um, some of the other products that are out there. How important is that for someone getting into the whole mindset of um, Agile, whether it's Kanban or Scrum or other, other frameworks? Well, I mean here we're talking i mean we're talking on on agile kind of uh, to a certain extent specifically but you are absolutely right you know tools you know trello jira so on right are needed and they will be part of introducing agile maybe not at the very beginning but you will need a tool to facilitate and to collaborate right especially if you have different a team member dispersed, you know, geographically. Uh, I mean, I've used Trello, you know, for a number of different projects. It's very useful. It's easy to use, right? Uh, so it, it, it's it's definitely a, a candidate. Uh, I'm not, you know, or I haven't done a comparative analysis of different tools, but but in terms of do we need a tool? The answer is yes. Any framework that you are using in our days to make it uh, 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 faster, to make it repetitive, to make it sustainable, you will need a tool uh, uh, as well for documentation, for traceability, and so on and so forth. Thank you. How much, uh, another question here is, how much time is needed to groom the backlog in general, and what sort of approaches do you recommend? Well, it, it really depends on how big the backlog is, right? Uh, it could be uh, from, you know, a couple of days to, you know, a couple of weeks, depending on how extensive uh, the backlog is, right? So there are, of course, uh, estimations, there are prioritizations, there are uh, 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 certain, uh, certain uh, uh, outputs or outcomes that did not work and that will come come back into the backlog so that that will take precedence over what's in existence already in the backlog so this is one of those things where i would say it depends but it can run into you know literally from few days to a few weeks okay and then my last question and of course we're still waiting for others to chime in please do ask your questions i think that's helpful to everyone because again, as I said, most people are probably thinking the same things, particularly if they're new to the Agile process and framework. My question would be, um, what are the, you know, the, the real sort of hallmarks that an that initiative of implementing Scrum is on track? In other words, let's say you've been pushed onto a team, you're now learning or a part of the whole Scrum initiative. How do you know, you know in your gut that the process is working well and how do you know something might just be wrong or off agile is 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 is, uh, is structured enough for you to have the ability to check what you're doing and whether you're doing it right or not and within the structure of uh, agile you know you have the appropriate um, the appropriate, uh, how should I say, the subject matter expertise to guide you and to facilitate your uh, your activities as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we all have the gut feel whether things are right or not, but you can't just depend on that. You have to fall back as to, like, as an example, we talked about the user story, right? So are we applying what, you know, this stakeholder wanted from the user story? 
right? Did we break down that backlog item to the appropriate tasks, right? In order to achieve, you know, they want to code this, they want to, you know, uh, uh, deliver that, they want to uh, see a, a red color, they want to see a calendar. So are we basically doing, you know, or delivering all of this along the way? There is like the, 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 the quality control aspect of it, right? is within the team but also after everything is said and done and will enable you that iteration that if it's not correct then you go back to the 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 the, the backlog and prioritize it to go through another sprint in order to rectify the situation thank you i haven't seen any questions come in so um I'm assuming everyone is pretty good with where they're at. Um, clearly, we have other programs coming up, and we also have programs that obviously uh, NASA is intimately uh, involved in and, and facilitating. If you do have any other particular programs, including others that might be more uh, additionally informative on the Scrum frameworks and approaches and Kanban, oh, et cetera, a, uh, please Sorry go. for interrupting. There is one question. Oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, from uh, how to avoid big differences between estimating during backlog, grooming, and during sprint planning when breaking into task. Sorry, Mike is not working. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, right? Um, the backlog estimation, it's it's not as accurate or as specific as the sprint planning uh, estimation because in the sprint planning your development team is involved and they have much more familiarity right with you know their velocity as an example and with uh, the assignment because they are the one who are assigning the uh, 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 the effort right or as we call them the story points yeah even though during the backlog grooming that this is done at a higher level, but I would actually go more with the sprint planning. If you end up with a big difference between the two, then there is a misunderstanding either on the side of the product owner or on the side of the development team. So we need to reconcile that as to why there is such a big difference between the two. And the Fibonacci approach actually will be will be uh, if you use it in both at both levels it should give you comparable estimation if it's still that much of a difference that means that something got it wrong somewhere and we need to reconcile it all right Okay, thank you very much, Nasser. Once again, a very detailed, in-depth program, covered a lot in a very short period of time, as usual. Um, and I thank you and all the delegates and people who have participated. And please, again, if you fill out the feedback. It's good for you, it's good for us, and uh, it helps us figure out how to always enhance what's going on at Star Weaver and uh, with our uh, experts like Nasser. Thank you, have a great, great day. Everyone, appreciate your time, Nasser. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.